What's good? Thank you for stopping by to visit the channel for this upcoming game preview of Alabama versus Georgia. If this is your first time visiting this channel and you want to hear a different take of college football from an analytical perspective, if you haven't done so already, please click that subscribe button, click the notification bell and select all so you don't miss another video. Also like the video and share the video. It does help this channel grow. And also you just saw a link earlier to my website. It is college FB geek. Dot com. If you want to get a little bit more information about college football, along with post game win expectancies and data charts to your liking as well, if you want to see a different take of college football from an analytical site. So it's definitely new. It's a work in progress. Give it a look. Let me know what you like and what you don't like and what you'd like to see. So with that being said, we're going to kick off this preview with how we usually do with the tail of the tape of advanced metrics between Alabama versus Georgia. So as we review the tail of the tape of advanced metrics, Alabama is on the left and Georgia is on the right. Georgia is the number one rated team in F+, my overall rating as well, and in FEI, uh, Brian Fremo's FEI rating. Um, also rated in the top six as well in both offense and defense. Alabama is a top five team in F+, overall rating and in FEI, and rated no worse than seventh in either offense and defense. Um, Basically, there are no advantages between these two teams. So definitely uh, the Vegas line is expected this game to be tight as well. Um, I think Georgia was uh, favored by 2.5 points. That's a very rare occasion, especially when you're playing in Tuscaloosa, um, considering Bama has not been a home underdog in, I want to say, in, since Nick Saban's first year there in 2007. When Tyler Van Dyke went down for Wisconsin on the first series, that was pretty much the game. Now, with that being said, I don't think Tyler Van Dyke was going to be worth uh, the 32 points that they lost by. It was really Alabama's ability to control the game from the line of scrimmage. And when I'm talking about the line of scrimmage, I'm really talking about the offensive line. Um, Alabama was able to just run the ball primarily at will um, against Wisconsin's defense. Um, Wisconsin didn't really generate enough pressure to really start to really force Alabama to throw the football down the field um, as a necessity. Um, basically, Alabama dictated this game from start to finish. Um, Jalen Milrow did throw three touchdown passes, but it wasn't like he was slinging the football down the field all over the place um, from start to finish. Um, the Crimson Tide, they're really a run first offense. Um, you, when you have the running back room that they have and you have a dynamic quarterback like Jalen Miro, you're going to utilize um, the skill set that is available to you. And hats off to Kalen DeVore um, for calling the game based on the talent that they do have at that spot. Um, they're not going to sling the ball um, like they did at Washington with Michael Penix and those um, core wide receivers that went to the NFL. Um, but they do have um, talented wide receivers, um, name, namely Ryan Williams, who you were going to hear this all season long. He's 17 years old. And quite frankly, he's probably the best wide receiver on their team. But at the end of the day, uh, this was a solid win for Alabama, um, basically like based off of coming off of their last um, game against USF, um, where everybody was wondering what was wrong with Alabama. Um, There's really nothing wrong with Alabama. I mean, at the end of the day, they won by 26 against USF and they weren't really healthy at the offensive line. They were healthy the other week against Wisconsin, and that's the line that they're running with. So what are the things that I've learned after watching a lot of college football over three decades is that the team that we saw the previous week or the week before will more than likely not be the same team that is going to show up the following week. Um, Georgia fans know this all too well. You can look back at last year, Alabama had to fight tooth and nail surviving a fourth and 31 to get out of Dodge against Auburn. They come in the following week, they beat them for the sec championship where everybody was all on Georgia um, head, heading into that game, I think a lot more people are going to be on Alabama based on how we saw Alabama looked against Wisconsin and how we saw how Georgia looked against Kentucky. I'm going to be honest with you. I just want to, I almost want to throw this performance by Georgia completely out of the window here. Um, mainly because I don't think they saw Kentucky as a threat offensively um, to do anything. Now, 
The one concern that I do have is the fact that Georgia did lose Tate Ratledge in this game. Um, and he went, he over, he actually underwent the tightrope procedure as well. So he's definitely going to be out uh, for quite a while. Um, and with him being out, uh, the running offense, you know, from Georgia that we've all known so well, uh, they haven't really performed up to snuff against FBS competition, um, especially against Kentucky. The One of the things that I've noticed was the 23.3% um, runs that were stopped at or behind a line of scrimmage. Um, that's a pretty high percentage, um, especially for a Georgia offensive line that is known for just bullying people and dominating the line of scrimmage. Um, but at the end of the day, they're, they only were playing Kentucky last um, the couple couple weeks ago. They were playing Kentucky. They're going to see Alabama this this upcoming weekend, and I think they're going to be a little more motivated. Um, the defense, they're going to have a couple of guys coming back as well on the defensive line. Um, and with that being said, Georgia hasn't really been at 100% all year on defense and on offense, to be quite honest with you. And they still haven't given up an offensive touchdown yet. So take that information with you as you will. So if you follow this channel, uh, this page is a lot different um, than what you're used to seeing. Um, you, what you usually see is, um, in this case, to give an example, it would be Alabama's offense versus Georgia's defense on one slide. And then on the second slide, I would have um, Bama's defense versus Georgia's offense. Um, but this time we're going to have everything all on one slide and also the run pla run pass splits uh, for both teams here. So that way you can kind of see where everything is. Um, so it's like a one stop shop. Um, so for the um, analytics breakdown for the advanced stats here. So as we are looking at the advanced stats, um, Bama's offense versus Georgia's defense here. Um, the passing game for Alabama, um, Georgia has the advantage uh, with their pass defense. Um, very elite uh, on that side of the ball here when it comes to defending the pass. Um, Bama does not throw the football as often as what you guys are used to seeing. Um, Bama is a running offense. Um, 61, 61% um, to 39% run pass ratio. Um, Bama only throws the football out of necessity. Um, they are primarily a running team. Um, they're going to try to lean on you with their offensive line and with their um, running game of Milro as well as uh, Jam Miller and Justice Haynes um, at running back. So, you know, this is really going to be a test of wills uh, when it comes to Bama. Are they able to utilize their running game against uh, Georgia's um, run defense? Um, and can Georgia's run defense uh, stand up uh, to Alabama as well? A um, couple of things to also look at um, with Georgia. Um, Georgia's uh, defense, <laughs> ironically, is 50-50 um, uh, when it comes to their run pass ratio. Um so they basically see, you know, some of everything uh, when it comes to it. And um, when it talks about starting field position, they don't really um, give up um, poor field position. Bama's offense, um, on the other end, they basically start at the 41 yard line on average. Um, so really is going to be a test of wills here. I think um, Bama holds a slight edge here. Um, but to me, I think this is where. Um, that's, I think that's where the game is going to uh, come down to, in my opinion. Um, Georgia's defense, um, if they're able to win um, some of the battles that are um, pushes um, in this case here, if they're able to win some of the pushes and force um, Bama to bog down on offense, uh, then this game is actually going to, I think, will tip in Georgia's favor here. Um, now, when I look at Bama's defense versus Georgia's offense, um, this is actually – a night and day difference in what I'm actually used to seeing when it comes to, um, you know, just Georgia not having a lot of advantage here, not having a lot of advantages. Um, Bama's defense um, for the first three games against FBS competition, um, granted, uh, they played Western, granted, played Western, um, Western Kentucky, South Florida, uh, and Wisconsin. Um, they've actually looked you know, pretty good against um, those off against those offenses here. Um, to Georgia's um, credit, they've only faced uh, two FBS teams, I believe, in Clemson and Kentucky. Um, I did not utilize their game um, against their FCS opponent, um, so this is only FBS teams. So basically, Georgia's offenses offense is kind of skewed a little bit. Um, but you know, as we we're looking at this here. 
Georgia and their ability to keep Carson Beck um, upright is going to be um, the key factor in this game, in my opinion, for their offense to keep moving. Um, the run game hasn't uh, really been humming um, at peak efficiency like we're used to seeing here. Um, and part of that is due to one, um, they haven't really had their running back room you know, 100% healthy as well. Um, and also they had some guys out uh, due to suspensions or whatever the case is. Um, as far as the offensive line goes that I mentioned earlier with um, Ratledge um, being out, um, that's a key contributor um, in this game to me. Um, when it comes to Georgia being able to hold up at the line of scrimmage against Alabama's front. So there's going to be a lot of questions that's going to be answered in this game, but a lot of things to actually look for. Uh, so when you are watching this game, um, keep an eye on uh, some of the th key things that I mentioned uh, when it comes to um, this, come this particular matchup. So the computer projection in this game actually has Alabama as a slight favorite, um, close to a point um, with a win probability of 53%. Um, this is the first time ever that, Alabama, well, not ever, but the first time since 2020 that Bama has been favored to beat Georgia um, per my power ratings. Um, since the 2020 season, Georgia has been the favorite um, in every game, and that is including both. That is including the SEC championships, national championship, like, yeah. <laughs> so uh, definitely something that you know, we're I'm not used to seeing, um, especially over the last couple of years. Um, but it looks like um, the model really likes Bama. Well, not really really likes, but um, likes Bama as a slight favorite. Um, and that's primarily due to the home field advantage here. If this game was played in Sanford Stadium, uh, Georgia would definitely be favored to beat Alabama um, in this game. if The game was playing in Athens. So um, with that being said. Uh, that is it for um, this game preview. So let me know what you think is going to win the game in the comment section below. Um, give me your score prediction. Also tell me why um, you think your team is going to win. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please give the video a like. Also subscribe. And also please be sure to visit the website at collegefbgeek.com. Thank you for visiting the channel. Have a great day.